In this video, we're going to be looking at a question from the Maths Leave Insert Paper 2 from 2022. You'll find some timestamps below the video if you want to skip to a specific question. And also, if you want to go to a different question that I'm covering in this video, check out the playlist that you should find a link for in the description below. And this is question nine. Uh, we have some geometry, we have a bit of volumes and areas, a bit of trigonometry, and an enlargement question in it. Uh, but first of all, part A, it gives us a multiple choice. Also, I should say to give you a little bit of a story. They often start these questions with a story. This story is somebody called Sean built a shed. Um, and yeah, they give us all these numbers for a shed. Uh, a couple of things they do tell us that are important. A rectangle on the bottom, that means these are all right angles. And they tell us the highest point, this point here is directly over the middle. That's very important, it's gonna be important later. That means this is six and six. It's exactly in the middle. And that's got, that means this is an isosceles triangle, um, which, Honestly, it doesn't matter if you didn't notice that, you probably would have guessed that this was the middle layer. But anyway. Okay, so they ask us, um, is the shed, is the height of the shed, which is the most likely of these multiple choice? Is the height of the shed three times as high as Sean, five times as high as Sean, or eight times as high as Sean? Well, we can simply do that, I have the numbers here, by getting the height of the shed, 8.5, and dividing by three. Uh, which gives me 2.83 meters uh, divided by 5 if, uh, let me write that 8.5 divided by 5 is equal 1.7 meters and 8.5 divided by 8 is equal to 1.06 meters now all of these are technically possible I guess I looked up the tallest person in the world and it's actually 2.7 something so close to this, so it's possible. Maybe there was someone this tall. Um, there's certainly people this short. And uh, this is about the average height of a person. But now it's very important to ask this, what's the most likely? The most likely is this one. 1.5 is around the average height of a person. So this one, this is way too tall, way too short. Any kind of English like that, a tick here and any kind of explanation like that will get you full marks. Now, part B, um, it says that Sean says that the capacity of his shed is over a million litres, and they tell us a million litres is, well, I'm sorry, they tell us one metre cubed is equal to a thousand uh, litres. Work out the volume of his shed to show you that he's correct. So let's just find the volume of this. And um, to find the volume of anything, all we have to do is find the area, and multiply it by the depth, and if it's a regular prism like this is. So let's find the area of the front first, and then just multiply that by 18, and we should get the volume. So for example, if you, anything, if you were trying to find a cylinder, get the area, multiply by the depth. A, a, a triangular prism, the area, multiply by the depth. The formulas are all the same for them. So in this case, to get the area of the front, it's a shape made up of um, a rectangle and a triangle. So we just add these two together. Let's get the area of the rectangle, that's 12 times seven. And let's get the area of the triangle. What's the height of the triangle? 8.5 minus seven. So that's 1.5 and the width the base of it is 12. So we can do both of these. These are both uh, simple area questions. This one's 12 times seven, plus this one is a half the base times the perpendicular height, 1.5. <clears throat> do each of these separately or do them all at once on a calculator. We get 84 plus uh, that's six times one and a half is nine. Add these together, we get 93. Um, so that's 93 meters squared, because we're only doing the area first. And then to get the volume, we multiply 93 times 18. That's the depth of a hair. And that gives us, let's see what the number is. 
I get, oh, I better write it down here, one, one, six, seven, four. That's meters cubed. So they asked us to find out if it's bigger than a million. Well, that's not bigger than a million, but we need to be careful. That's meters cubed, not liters. Remember they told us one meter cubed was a thousand liters. So we need a number a thousand times bigger than this. You can double check this with a calculator, but really I'm just adding three zeros, multiplying by a thousand. So that's how many liters there are. And that, that is in fact bigger than uh, a million, which is all they wanted for that question. Okay, part C, they asked us to use Pythagoras theorem to find this length here, D, the length up here. So to do that, I'm gonna draw the triangle again, or well, I'm only gonna draw part of it. I'm gonna draw this small triangle here. It's a right angle. The, the width, the base of it here is six. The height of it here is the difference between 8.5 and seven is 1.5. And D is what we're looking for. So that's what they're asking us to find, this one here. So use Pythagoras theorem. Well, Pythagoras theorem is um, a short side squared plus the short side squared is equal to the long side squared, the hypotenuse. So we can write that like this. D squared, the hypotenuse, the long one, is equal to six squared plus 1.5 squared. Um, you can go ahead and put this into a calculator, but it's 36 plus um, nine over four. Again, you can do that in a calculator if you want. And uh, D then, D is equal to the square root of all of this. And that is, is equal to 6.1846, so on. And they asked us to find it correct to one decimal place. So there's this, this one here is important. We look at the next one then. 18, is it closer to 10 or 20? It's closer to 20, so 6.2 is our answer there. Okay, for part D, they give us this on the page. So in your exam, you'd see exactly something, well, not exactly, but something like this. A, and it says a scale diagram of the front of the shed is shown here. Um, construct an enlargement. So enlargement is the important word here. Uh, you, you can learn about them in your book, how to do rotations, enlargements, um, translations, things like that. So construct an enlargement with uh, the center A and a scale factor of three. So what does that mean? Um, I don't have a compass or a ruler to show you how to do this, but I, I think I should still be able to give you a rough idea. There's five points on this. So here's A, obviously. Um, if you draw lines, so I'd use a pencil for this in the exam, a light pencil. I would get a ruler between these two points and draw a line. I would do the same with all the others. I would draw a line through it, again, draw a line through it, and again through these two, draw a line through it. So that's what an enlargement looks like tr from this point. A is the most important point because it looks at everything else. And then they say it's a factor of three. So the length of this away, you can use a ruler or a compass. A compass is a little easier. This is three. You can measure this length. So let's say it's, um, I don't know, what would it be on the page roughly? I am terrible at this, but let's say it's two centimeters. Well, then you would want six centimeters up. So let's see about up here that'd be six centimeters tall, and that's where you want to put a point. Better way is to use a compass. Get a compass, put this exact distance here, and you want two of them. So put one here, and the next one, I think I was probably a bit off there, and um, the next one here. So three up. And you can do the same with all these. Change your compass, come out here, now here. Obviously I can't do it too exactly. And you could go ahead and do this for every point. Now there's a few tricks for some of the other points. And um, this is, there's a straight line here. So there'll still be a straight line when we do this. Although I guess you've no great way to draw a straight line in the exam. So yeah, you'd probably still want to use a compass to get this point. Um, and 
and again a straight line down but you've no good way to draw a straight line so again you probably want to get a compass to get out to this point so that's uh, what the once you have all this pencil work in you could go ahead with something like a biro although you don't need to and put in the full uh, the full size of it and again it, you don't need to do a biro at the end I would recommend you only use a pencil actually light pencil for all of these lines and then for the final bit a bit of a heavier pencil okay part e they've given us a triangle we're on to a, a trigonometry question we're away from the shed finally and then um, they've given us a length of this side length of this side and an angle and they've asked us oh they've given us the answer but still they've asked us to find bc so what's that that's a b and c they've asked us to find the length of bc this length here so when you're dealing with triangles, the first thing I'd like you to think of is to use right angles. There's no right angles here. It might look like a right angle up here, but no, there's no reason we know any right angles. So that's out. So then the next thing you want to be thinking of is the triangles without a right angle. You'll find it in this book, these formulas, down here on page 16. And there's two formulas. You want to use the sine rule and sine rule and the cosine rule. Now in this case the sine rule won't work but uh, th these are the two rules you want to be thinking of when you have a triangle with no right angle. Um, the, and you can just go ahead and use both of them. I find the sine rule the easier one so I try to use that one first and if you look at the sine rule it's, it talks about a length over an angle so you would need this length divided by this angle, this length divided by this angle this length divided by this angle. There's not enough angles. Um, we're, we're, we want this, let's call it, uh, does it give us a letter? Let's call it x. So we want x divided by sine 30 and we have nothing else. We don't know, uh, we're missing an angle. So we can't use the sine. You can go ahead and try. It's usually the easiest one to use. So I would recommend going ahead and try. But the cosine rule is what we're gonna use here. And the good thing about the cosine rule is it always works. Even if uh, you, even if the sine rule is easier, the cosine rule always works. So probably best to learn that one first. Uh, the cosine rule looks like, looks something like this. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus BC cosine, um, this letter here, capital A. And uh, where is that? Yeah, there it is there. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's the top of the page. Not that I pointed at the bottom. If you zoomed in, seeing where I was pointing. Okay, so the cosine rule, how does that work? Um, we're talking about lengths here. These small letters are the lengths, the big letters are the angles, and they're across from each other. So 30 would be a big angle. If this was big A, that'd be little a. If this was big C, that'd be little c. Um, I, I guess we should have called, instead of x, let's call this guy A. A would be much easier. Big A, little a. Um, although we'd have to put the angles in here. Anyway, not very important. Um, but it, it, actually, I'm sorry, it can be confusing for students which letters go where. Honestly, a bit of practice. Go to your book and you'll find 50 questions that look like this. Just do them. Just do them over and over. They'll keep changing on you. It'll take you a few hours. But by the end of those couple of hours, you'll be able to do these questions. And they're definitely coming up in the exam. So in this case, A squared. We don't know what A is. We leave it alone. Uh, that's because A and big A. Um, this is the angle we have to use. B squared, either or the other sides. I don't care which, but in this case, I assume we'll use seven. Seven squared. Plus C squared, we'll use three. Sorry, uh, tr uh, three squared. Minus B multiplied by C times cosine of 30. And you can go ahead and put all that into a calculator now, although if you made a mistake, you'd probably get in a bit of trouble. Let me uh, see if I clean this up a bit. Well, I can do this in my head, I guess. Equals seven squared is 49, plus three squared is nine, minus seven times three is 21, times cosine 30. Uh, what's cosine 30? Oh, square root of three over two. Again, you can go ahead and use a calculator though, um, if you want for that. Um, this would become 58, minus 21 times square root of three over two. At this point, I, I would use a calculator. Put it in and you will get 
4.65 something, 0, 4, 7, something like that. And they ask you to get it to the nearest two decimal places. Oh, they already gave us the answer. I forgot that. 4.65. And that's, that's correct. Okay, um, on to part uh, two of E. I think I'll rub this out and find a bit of room first. Okay, a bit more room, and I've gone ahead and put the number we got from part one. And for part two, they ask us to find the angle A, C, B. Let me just quickly tell you how to know which angle they mean. You start at the point A, down here. So we start at point A, we go to point C, and we go to point B. That's the angle they're talking about. It's the only angle that exists for A, C, B. A, C, B. There's only one angle there on that on this picture I drew. So this, this angle in here, big C, is what they're looking for. So uh, they ask us to find that and they remind us that we have this answer from before. Okay, so again, we need to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. You can use the cosine rule. It's a little more difficult, but we'll go ahead and use the sine rule this time. Sine rule, what we need is a length and an angle across from it a length and an angle across from it. They're the four things we need. We're only missing one, and we have to miss one if we want to find it out what it is. So the sine rule looks something like this. Um, you can write it many different ways. Sine C divided by the length it's across from, three. Sine C divided by the length it's across from is equal to sine 30 divided by the length it's across from, 4.65. So this is a lot easier to solve than the other one, lots of square roots in the cosine rule. Sine rule, a lot neater, a lot easier. Well, we can rearrange a bit of this and get sine C is equal, multiply both sides by three, sine 30 divided by 4.65. And I would just go ahead and put that into a calculator now. And um, the answer the calculator gave me is 10 over 31. It also, it could give you just um, it, it could give you decimal places. That's fine. The sine c is equal to that. Then to get c, c is a little harder. We can't we can't just divide both sides. We can't take away both sides. We have to cancel out this sign by using an inverse sign. And if we did it to the left side, we have to do it to the right side. So this, it's on your calculator. Uh, again, you should get used to this as you're doing these questions. Practice makes perfect. Um, to get sine C, to get down to C, we do this regularly. You put just put sine minus one on your calculator. These destroy each other. So we get C equals sine minus one of this number. And that will equal, I've just wrote down 19. I don't know what the round is off. Okay, so that's uh, that long question with a nasty bit of trigonometry just stuck at the end for no real reason. And if you have any questions about any of it, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer.